Hey, this is Dave Center Bowl Leading. We're so thankful that you're continuing this video series on how to make fundraising simple. And we really appreciate uh, you connecting with us. Uh, we're on episode number two called The Bold Story. And just as a reminder, um, one of the things that we've uh, been talking about in this last session was just kind of an overview of putting names together, story together, gifts, and a smile. And we really want to kick off this series talking about how to craft a bold story. So that'll be the first uh, sort of in-depth look at uh, putting this whole system together. And we want to just welcome you to our video series. I've been with uh, nonprofits, working with nonprofits for nearly, nearly two decades. Um, for the first uh, 15 years, I worked at, with one organization and uh, for 13 of those 15, I was the executive director. And we went from about $300,000 uh, to $400,000 uh, income to the last year we were there, we raised uh, close to $2 million um, from small, medium, large, extra large gifts, including annual fund and uh, pledges for a capital campaign. We would love for you to connect, uh, know more about us on bolding.com. Also check out our social media channels, uh, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Love to, for, to connect with you that way. Or you can always, uh, fill out a contact form and shoot us an email. So without, uh, um, further ado, one of the things that we really encourage you to be thinking about is this idea of a philanthropic journey. We want to provide the least amount of resistance for a donor's generosity. We want to make it joyful and we want to make it very concise and clear. And uh, the, I don't know if uh, you've been to some of these bigger hospitals. I, I've been to some of the bigger hospitals and they have all these little red, blue, yellow lines on their floor. So you know how to get to different departments uh, so you don't get lost in all the different hallways. And it's in the same fashion that we want to make sure that when we're connecting with donors, that we have a single thread that goes through all of those things so that people understand where, what we're doing and how we're bringing them from point A to point B. And that's what we call not only the philanthropy journey, but this, the storytelling element of what we do and why it's important to be consistent, to be concise, and also to be compelling. When you're a fundraiser, you have to have the audacity to ask for gifts. Uh, there's just no doubt about it. Whether it's through a direct mail piece, a digital piece, or in person, we have to have the audacity to ask people to get involved, to not sit on the sidelines, but to make a difference in their community. And a lot of times that's as simple as making an invitation. It's not trying to shame people and make people feel bad, although you might use some of those techniques depending on your particular brand and organization, but the idea is to have an invitation for donors to be a part of what you do. So when we talk about bold story, we're going to give you a way to talk about your organization. And a lot of times people get stuck. So we're going to talk uh, about a methodology that really is going backwards. And uh, we'll kind of lead you through it and then we're going to reverse it. So you have some passion statements to talk about your organization. Now, this is just one methodology. We really encourage you and, and maybe you have other ways that you've done it and we'd love to hear about that. Um, but storytelling is a craft. There's lots of ways to kind of uh, do this. Uh, one of the ones that uh, when you see TV or movies, um, they usually have this sort of foreshadowing of a client, uh, of a conflict and then they talk about their characters and the environment they're in and there's some sort of a cliffhanger climax of uh, people they're impossible odds and then they get through that and then there's a sort of sweet uh, conclusion to the whole thing and uh, of course on a season finale you see a cliff another cliffhanger to get you to come back and watch the next one and that idea of a cliffhanger we want you to hold on to that because that's really important in storytelling and we're going to talk about that uh, when we talk about passion statements the other thing that we want to talk about too is that we want to make sure this story is a story of not just your organization, but all of your supporters, volunteers, donors, partners, sponsors, that it's a community of people helping another community or a community that's advocating for a particular cause. And that it's, we use you, we use you language. So we think of, I always tell people we're like UPS for like the mail service. We provide uh, gifts of generosity that we repackage into programs to help certain people or a particular cause. And that's what we do. So we want to make sure that you use the language that is not people helping us do great work, 
but we're working together with great people doing great things for a great cause. So the first thing we want you to do is list your programs. So you have maybe two or three main programs or um, categories. You maybe have 12, 15 programs, but you should be able to get down to two, three or four categories of programs. So we want to do that. In this particular example, just using my experience of working at a homeless shelter, the main ones there were housing, education and addiction. And uh, the problems that we're trying to solve in each of those programs uh, were dangerous and unstable living environments, um, being unemployable in today's marketplace, and then having uh, addiction issues or uh, dangerous lifestyles. And those were the problems and we're trying to help particular people and we uh, helped people that were over 18 men and women. And you might have different criteria. You might have a particular cause, you might help uh, veterans or animals or dogs or cats, whatever it may be, you have certain criteria. So whatever that may be, that's who you help. So we have certain problem or programs that help problems or solve problems for these particular people or for this particular issue. And then once you've do done that, uh, we would, uh, when we talk about it, these programs help uh, solve these problems and these people. But then we want you to do the switch. We want you to reverse that uh, here in a few moments. And in order to do that, uh, we kind of want to um, flip it here for you, is that we help people with these problems solve these uh, through these programs. So we help people solve their problems through these programs, and that's kind of what we do. And uh, as you talk about that, so we help certain people with their problems with these programs, is we don't want to forget that um, bigger step of the passion of why do we help these people with these problems uh, through these programs? Why do we do that? And so a easy, easy way to talk about that is to complete the sentence, I love my organization because, or I started working here because, or I started to volunteer here because, or I started to give here because. What is that passion? What is that gut-wrenching reason uh, why? So the why is super important, and that passion, those emotional words of why you got involved, uh, really gives context to who you're helping with what kind of problems and how you're doing that. So we have, we, we do this. We have a passion for this and we help people to, um, solve these problems through these programs. So we reverse it. So first we talked about we, we do these programs solving these problems for these people. And now we reverse it to say why we do that and who do we help or what cause we're trying to solve or advocate for to solve these particular problems through these particular programs. So that puts passion front and center, the thing that you talk about first. So when we crafted this, we talked about programs, problems, people, and passion. And the reason we do that is just for an easy flow, because that's the way we're used, we're used to talking about things. But we want you to actually reverse that and talk from your passion first, and then end with programs when people ask questions about how you do that. So you might start with the first question that, I am passionate because we provide housing, education, nutrition to people who have no homes. Well, that may be true, but it's not as emotional laden. It doesn't really reveal your heart about the situation. So you might say instead that instead of saying we provide housing, education, nutrition, we might say we rescue men and women from dangerous, unstable, and destructive lifestyles. So instead of talking about the programs, we may talk about some of the problems and the people we help and get those very colorful language, very emotionally uh, language. Because if we don't do that, if we don't have power language, passion language, people are not going to pay attention. So without hand slamming, foot stomping, out of control, wailing for change, there's not going to be any. So we got to be pounding on the desk, crying out uh, from every street corner, this must change. And if we do that, people are going to start to pay attention. When I first started at the homeless shelter, we were known as a drunk tank and had uh, the leader, previous leadership had kind of not really done all the storytelling and the impact that they were making. And people formed their own story about what that organization was about. Well, we spent uh, over the next uh, 15 years really changing that story in the minds of people. We did that through inviting them to be a part of it, through giving, volunteering, but we also did it through a lot of storytelling. And you can do the same thing. 
you can change the perspective uh, of people. So they're either going to make up their minds about what you do, or you can invite them to be a part of the story that you're telling them. So that's it. When we talk about a bold story, you got to get into the weeds of it. Programs help solve these problems for these people. And I'm, I'm passionate because of this, the why. And if we can tell people why we're passionate, they're going to ask those next questions about, well, how are you solving it? And then we can get into the details. But when you lead with the details, sometimes we kind of get into that lecture mode and we don't want to get in a lecture mode. We want to invite people to ask questions, invite people to be part of what we're doing because they feel our passion, they identify with the emotion, and they want to stand up with us and see the change happen. This is Dave Senna with Bold Leading, and we're part of uh, the Making Fundraising Simple, and we just talked about uh, storytelling or having a bold story. We encourage you to be a part of uh, the rest of this video series, and if you aren't already part of our um, bold leading community. We hope that you would sign up for our weekly email with reminders about this video series and also other tips and tricks of how to make a difference in your community through your nonprofit. This is Dave Center for Bold Leading and uh, we thank you for watching this video series and go tell that bold story.